So just a quick lesson on Etude Number 7 by Brauer. Um, you can get the sheet music, there's a link in the YouTube info section. Um, all the etudes come in one book now, which is really affordable and great. And um, so for Etude Number 7, I want to talk about a couple of different things in relationship to this etude. Um, I want to talk about right hand fingering, even though it seems like the left hand might be more intense in this. It's, I think it's actually more the right hand that's a real workout in this particular piece. So there's lots of options that we can talk about in the, in the right hand. Um, we'll talk also about the position changes and the slurs a little bit and the dynamics and things like that. And the fact that, you know, Brer, uh, what he mentions about the tempo. So first thing about the tempo, he says as rapidly as possible. So you could probably, you could probably find people playing it faster than I can. Um, that's kind of like the speed that I would go at the moment just to stay in control a little bit. But let's talk about my right hand fingering. So I've decided to go like, go P, I, M, and then A, M, I, M. So P, P, I, M, A, M, I, M. So we could even try that on open strings, right? You can just go, I've seen lots of other great solutions, um, depending on what speed you're going to. Um, um, you could sweep the thumb, you could do all sorts of different just I am kind of fingerings, but I feel like that first one just brings me through the first four notes really nicely, and then I just cover the rest with I am, which is just something that's really comfortable to me. When I get into the, the longer phrase, same fingering at the beginning, and then I just do I am rest strokes all the way down. Oh, sorry. Um, all the way into that last bass note. So I I am rest strokes until here. So at the very bottom, I use my thumb. That way, my fingers can set up that that softer um, upper interval. So. About rest strokes, um, feel free to not use rest strokes. Um, I think free strokes are also good. Uh, that, that feels fine as well, but I really like the security and the strength of the rest strokes, especially because it's crescendoing on the way down. Um, I feel like I can just dig in more confidently. And it feels good to just, for me, to just do the same I am fingering all the way down. Um, sorry, do the thumb at the end. Some people might choose to go with the I finger. Kind of adding the thumb on the bass line. But just for me, it's just better for me to just like I am all the way down. It feels really good to me. Um, now, for the marcato section, when I first started doing it, I, was, I did it with my thumb. Uh, you know, just like repeated thumb, and actually that still feels pretty good. Um, I was experimenting, and used, like when I performed it there, um, I used P-I, so P, I, P, I, P. Just trying to get like alternation so it doesn't feel so 
um, tense in the right hand. I have to say that feels pretty good though, and I think it sounds maybe even better, but... Um, the only reason I might suggest using PI is that um, if you reached faster speeds than I'm playing, um, you might need that in order to go like blazing fast. Um, repeating the thumb um, depends how much you've like practiced your heavy metal, just like all downstrokes, right? Um, but I feel it's a little on the tense side in, in the right hand. Just depends on what speed you go. So either all thumb or thumb and eye. It might even be harder. <laughs> but that's what I chose. And then for the upper one, just all I M's. Um, so I'm just using all I M rest strokes all the way down, and then the final note with the thumb, so that upper fingers can play those, and Ponticello. Back to the normal fingering, P I M A M I M. Just all I am. Same thing at the end, I'm using thumb I. Um, thumb, uh, thumb, sorry, thumb, I, thumb. Or you can just use all thumb. It's got to be a little bit rapid with the thumb at the end there. So a couple of other things to talk about. Um, you might notice that you're seeing my middle finger like mute the strings often. Things like that, like at the very end I'll just mute it. It's just because I wanted a little bit more of a crisp cutoff at the end and I was just trying to be careful about um, the rests. seeing I'm cutting the sound often with the middle finger. Um, if you're more on the beginner side um, or like early intermediate, um, you might not need to focus on that just yet. Um, but if you're firmly in the intermediate uh, level, you might want to practice muting your, your notes just so not everything is just like ringing out randomly, right? Um, just offers a little bit of, of control. So the other thing is that um, the, the position changes are a little bit awkward in this, so um, I had to practice quite a bit even just going to there. You know, just making sure that that felt good, and a great exercise would just be to become comfortable with. put them together and with the mute at the end so there's lots of little things you can work on in this piece and of course like if you're more on the early intermediate like go, go slow right it's not so much about the speed it's about the control right so you want to have a certain amount of control over the sound um, and if you're ruining that by like trying to play blazingly fast, um, you should be careful about that. It's not very good for your development. So just nice clean playing, clean position shifts. So making sure your thumb follows your hand up here, or in other words, your arm just moves the hand up. Um, don't let your thumb drag behind your hand. And keeping your slurs relatively clean and making sure these these slur passages are, are nice and clean as well. Keep in mind when you're doing slurs, there's two ways that you can kind of do slurs, right? One would be a, a I'm particularly talking about the descending slurs. Descending slurs, you can do a, a little rest stroke. See how my finger starts here and then it pulls down towards the other string and then rests on the string? That gives a nice, clean, crisp pull-off sound. Um, the other way is to just lift your finger off at a, a less steep of an angle so it doesn't hit the string below. Um, depending on 
on how clean your slurs are, you might want to go in one direction or the other. So if your slurs are a little sloppy and they don't sound very loud on the second note, I would do practice the, at least practice this downward kind of left hand rest stroke. strokes and then when, when you go to perform it you can just relax that a little bit and do less of a steep angle but you can see like I'm still kind of doing a little bit of the rest stroke so I can get that clear slur sound besides that there are some dynamics in the piece and they're a little bit challenging but the main one is the um, fortissimo and then the soft upper interval that kind of major seven interval there and then um, some of these crescendos. So it's, it can be, it's kind of gradual and then abrupt dynamics. Um, and then at the end, just be careful. And doing that mezzo forte to the piano at the end there, uh, it's, it's a little bit tough. So you might just want to try playing the first one more like a forte. That way you have more room to make the second one piano. It's just, you create contrast, right? Besides that, um, we'll be moving on to 18 number eight next, next week. So I hope you enjoy. Thanks.